guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. You can see I am joined by Macarius, who is currently inside a match. Let's waste no time in today's video, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to watch one of the best mortar players inside the entire world play live. Now, Macarius actually normally uses the hog rider mortar deck but he says right now he loves this rascals mortar bait version with the miner in there it's not a new deck but it's definitely back inside the meta he says by far the strongest mortar deck inside the game even if you're not a mortar player this deck might make a believer out of you we're in line for some amazing gameplay no doubt so let's go ahead and jump right to it against who else? It's Sendalia, who is just on the channel. Uh, the cannon cart, the cannon cart thumb, or this deck proves cannon cart is underrated. You can see it right there against that mortar. Uh, that was about four or five videos ago. He was a great guest on Voice, first time guest. If you want to watch that video, if you're interested in Graveyard after this one, I would highly recommend you guys do so. So early lead here for Sendalia as he goes in for that Graveyard Poison on the left. He's been using this graveyard deck, and apparently he likes it a ton, even inside this new meta. It's hard to even say new meta. I was pretty surprised, guys. Only three balance changes? That's all we got? Anyway, immediately intercepting that Ice Golem at the bridge there with a Goblin Gang. That was a nice play there by Macarius and the Spear Goblins to defend against that naked graveyard now because the Ice Golem was dead. Now we have a nice little push here in the right, but yeah, what's up with the balance changes, man? We got him early, before the end of the season. That doesn't make too much sense. Not to be negative, but it's weird, right? It feels weird. We're playing under the new balance, and I think that's all we're going to get for balance changes. I don't know 100%, but I think that's the impression that I got, is this is it. Arrows, Executioner, Witch. That's it. Anyway, here we go, guys. Graveyard is down. We have Spear Goblins again to respond to that. Meanwhile, Mortar's down for us against that Bomb Tower. Miner goes in, attacking that right tower, using that log just to make sure we're able to defend nicely there. Snowball comes down, but we have a Mortar Connection, ladies and gentlemen. Mortar Connection on that right tower and the Miner. 176 remaining. That's going to be GG. A Fireball in hand will end it against Sendalia. Shout out to Sendalia. Check out his YouTube channel as well. I will link that below. Let's see where Macarius is right now in the world, and then we'll go into the next match here, guys. So we are currently, let me promote him too. We're currently 43rd in the world. Be right back, guys. Before we get to the gameplay, guys, today's video is brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends, a game that I love so much that I started a second YouTube channel on it. As a matter of fact, I'm halfway through recording a video for my second channel, which will also be linked in the description below. So download the game, guys. It is incredibly fun and addicting. I did some sponsored stuff for it here on the main channel, and I got hooked, hence the second YouTube channel. Now, guys, if you download the game today, or actually for the next 30 days, and check your inbox inside the game, you will get some really incredible rewards. You'll get an amazing free champion, Executioner, who you can really lean on in the early game. you also get two clan boss keys, you'll get 10 mystery shards, and 100,000 silver. A really nice starting package for you guys. So thank you, Raid Shadow Legends, for sponsoring today's video. Again, guys, the download link and my second channel link will be in the description below. All right, guys, inside the next match against Mr. Milano. Mr. Milano, the owner of like 500 max accounts. <laughs> We go with a mortar immediately in the right lane here, and a, a bandit in the left. We have a ram, a ram rider, a battle ram, excuse me, in the right. Zap comes down, and then we play the goblin gang right there in the center. We have a royal ghost and a couple barbarians in the right, excuse me. And then we go spear goblins here. He gets a lot of Spear Goblin value, does Macarius, does he not, guys? In that first match against Sendalia, he was using those Spear Goblins really adeptly on the defensive end. Just, you know, he doesn't waste them. I I've noticed that, and of course he's going to do it now that I say it, right? But I noticed that he doesn't really play them at the bridge, uh, you know, randomly. He gets a lot of value out of his Spear Goblins. So here we go, it's going to be a uh, Minions and a bandit running right into that fat boy rascal there and now we have some rascals on the counter push no log in the opponent's deck so they're gonna have to respond to this using a royal ghost and an e-wiz so now we have a big push coming in the right we have a miner there to distract that royal ghost and then we have that mortar down mortar's gonna get one shot no shots excuse me against that e-wiz miner stays alive we're still gonna have to defend here do we have goblin gang in hand here we have a log that ought to get the job done one hit from that e-wiz make it two hits from that e-wiz so we do take the first damage blow of this match. 
Well, I guess we've taken another damage blow here. Or we've done a little bit of damage, excuse me, via the log onto the right tower. But otherwise, about halfway through here, we are at a slight disadvantage. Kind of a reset point during the match here. The opponent splits minions in the back. Not sure who's on this account. We have a bandit charging into those spear goblins. We have Rascals played right in the center, preventing that bandit from getting into her dash. And yesterday's video, again, a lot of you guys commented. It, it, it seems to be 50-50 mixed opinions so far about the triple elixir overtime. The triple elixir final minute of matches, you know? People are kind of split from the comments on my videos, you know We do get one mortar hit on that left lane and again just nice defense here Spear goblins helping out as well again The ewiz does get two hits though on that right tower We're in uh, double elixir time now in regulation and a another battle ram comes down against this mortar We're gonna immediately respond with bats and a log keeping that mortar alive Will mortar get another shot off nice job supporting this mortar here now mortar is a lock on that left tower We go in with the miner. I thought he might play that miner to protect the mortar instead he attacks that tower uses rascals to chop down the royal ghost and the bandit now we have those girl rascals taking care of those minions can we take care of both of them we can spear goblins are down as well nice spear goblins there can he get the reset no the opponent does not get the reset on our mortar against that tower meanwhile we attack with the miner we defend with the bats here comes minions down on our miner one second remaining zap comes down against the goblin gang 932 remaining on the left tower here we go guys two minutes in overtime you know what that means Means. That means next minute is triple elixir. What? <laughs> so here we go. It's going to be a mortar. How do you play a mortar bait deck in triple elixir? It's going to be high pace to say the least. I don't know if my mediocre commentary skills can keep up with it, guys. We have a bandit in the left here. We're going to respond with the goblin gang as Zap comes down from the opponent and Rascals there. Reset in the right lane. 932 remaining on the left tower. Still here and a battle ram down just the nick of time against Mr. Milano. We have again the Zap coming down to prevent those bats from stopping that battle ram, but not before that mortar gets one hit on the left tower 488 remaining we haven't even used fireball this entire match guys 117 116 15 remaining in this match we have rascals down again rascal getting a ton of value for macarius inside this match 488 can we do this of course we can do this a fireball minor and a mortar hit will be all we need here so here comes that uh minor that's it ggs right fireball's gonna end it and there he goes triple elixir time and the tower is down so 2-0 oh, way to start the video all right guys sorry forgot to check there we're going against destroyer uh next match here 10 seconds in sorry forgot to check where he was in ladder i will do that uh before the next match i had a little connection issue but we're inside the next match he's 2-0 oh right now and we'll see what Destroyer is playing. Starts out with a Zap as his small spell. We go in with the Miner, trying to complement those bats. And guards come down from Destroyer, the opponent. Our bats are going to get tons of damage on that right tower. Just three or four little bats take it down about 500, 600 damage off that right tower. Giant Skeleton sighting in the right. Torin, actually, speaking of Giant Skeleton, reached out to me. You guys know Torin, the guy from Global Empire, who's just an, an amazing Giant Skeleton player back when nobody played Giant Skeleton. Skeleton. He's back and playing the game, so I hope to get him back on voice really soon. Uh, maybe by the end of the season, hopefully next season. So a Tesla comes down against that mortar here. We have Spear Goblins to chop down that Tesla as well. Maybe get, no, I was going to say maybe get one mortar hit. Actually, we do get one mortar hit. Wow, that was incredible. That mortar came down. That mortar hit seemed to come down like 10 seconds after the mortar was destroyed. Now we go Baby Dragon in that same lane here. Not a good matchup for us. Can we distract the Baby D? We do with a Miner. Nice Miner there to distract that Baby Dragon. Allow those bats to chop down that Baby D. Actually, they chop him almost all the way down there. That's going to be a really, really nice sequence there for Macarius. Sending in that Miner. Cycling the bats when he knew the opponent had Baby Dragon. He knows what deck this is. And then he went in with the Miner to distract the Baby Dragon. Point him in the opposite direction here we go it's going to be a tesla and a giant skeleton that's a big commitment there by the opponent mccary is just happy i'm sure just to play defense here notice where he placed those rascals so that the giant skeleton or excuse me the boy uh the boy rascal would not be in range of the tesla Really well played there, and now he applies a little bit of pressure with the right lane Spear Goblin. So there he goes, playing them at the bridge there. So I do stand corrected. It is a move that he does, but only when necessary, only when he wants to get a little bit of chip damage or force a spell out of the opponent's hand. In that case, it was Zap. 
So here we go. Guards are again down by the opponent. We respawn with the Rascal, same lane as this giant skeleton. Now we're going to apply some opposite lane pressure. Here comes Baby Dragon, also the Miner, to anticipate, again, the Baby Dragon. Keep those Spirit Goblins alive for a little bit, or excuse me, the Goblin Gang alive, and we connect for a decent amount of damage to that right tower, kind of splitting our damage almost exactly here on both of the Princess Towers of the opponent with about 25 seconds left. And here comes the Balloon. It is the Torrin deck here, guys. A Fireball for the first time comes again down from Macarius, excuse me if I can speak, and then we have the bats down against that balloon. So, very interesting to see the Torrin deck being played so high right now by somebody who's not Torrin on ladder. It is that balloon NATO being the last two cards. This is a very difficult deck, and I, and I think it's a really fun deck to play for you guys. There is no log here, so Macarius trying to punish, having that zap out of cycle. Tons of Spear Goblins on that left tower. Also, no big spell for the opponent, so we are bunching up our troops more than we normally would. Here we go. Bats down. Very, very nice timing on those bats. Waiting till the Baby Dragon locked onto the tower, then comes the fireball we have spear goblin separated from the girl rascal nice defense again there that was really well played 75 spectators right now you don't see numbers like that anymore we have the miner to pull that giant skeleton back but there was a nice king tower activation by destroyer it looks like we're happy to maybe spell cycle here if we can defend against this giant skeleton we play the rascals again same lane here recognizing there's nothing the opponent can do about it baby dragon coming down we're gonna take that fireball value actually i strike that uh, as long as we can defend here, this is going to be GG. But we have a balloon and a baby dragon coming our way. We have a miner on the tower. We have fireball in hand, I think. Do we? Do we? Where's that fireball? <laughs> he doesn't have the enough elixir. We have to defend first. Now we have fireball in hand, and it comes down. That's three in a row for Macarius. This guy is on a win streak here, guys, to start this video into the next match. Actually, I lied. Let's check to see actually where he is this time. Then we'll go into the next match. So he's 26th in the world. Be right back. Jeez, I was getting so excited that I was, like, pushing my hat off my head here. Jeez, all right. Here we go into the next match against Infinity and Mukul. Infinity Mukul. Uh, so we start out with the Mortar first play here. Minions in response from the opponent. Uh, mortar first play seems to be a move that Macarius is willing to make here. Identify what the opponent has for counters. Maybe get them in a weird situation where they don't have a great response, such as the case right here. We just keep supporting that mortar with bats, and now we go in with a minor. Barbarians down from the opponent. Look at that minor placement, allowing our bats to... One of our bats... No, none of our bats to get on the tower. My bad. But it almost worked out. We could have two bats on that tower, get an extra couple hundred damage. Didn't work out that time, but always to keep that in mind, right? Keep Keep in mind that your opponent's going to try to predict the miner oftentimes with another ground tank and then you can use that miner in the back to make sure you're pulling that tank to the back and freeing up the lane for your bats for your goblins whatever so it's a lava hound deck is lava hound back is lava hound back <laughs> executioner was was nerfed there's no doubt about it so is lava hound now a viable deck. Skeleton's going to chip away at that mortar, but not before we get a decent amount of hits. Fireball comes down from the opponent. The right tower is going to fall around 1,000 HP or so after that last mortar hit, 1016. And now Spear Goblins and Goblin Gang are going to defend against the remnants of this Lava Hound push in the left lane. You know what? Pretty well done there. Pretty well done by Macarius. Again, going pretty aggressive offensively after the Lava Hound was dropped. And then just defending one at a time with Rascals, Bats, Spear Goblins, Goblin Gang in the opposite lane. Even though there's no heavy hitter, I guess the more, the, uh, excuse me, the Rascals are kind of like an air targeting heavy hitter. But even though there's no Musketeer, there's no Ewiz, there's no Hunter, some of those big, uh, you know, big air targeting, more higher DPS, excuse me, cards, uh, we're still able to get by just fine, which is why he likes having cards like Rascals, like Fireball in this deck to complement the other air targeting cards, the Goblins, the Goblin Gang. Speaking of Fireball, it comes down over there against the minions, and immediately in response is the Barbarians from the opponent. We have, he has Zap in hand, I believe, now. Let's see if he uses it. He uses it, but he misses about 150 Spear Goblins. <laughs> and we're going to go ahead and just Fireball. We're able to cycle that back, all the way back to a second Fireball there. 30 seconds remaining here, guys. I think this one's going to be over, too. Is this going to be four in a row here to start this video? That's insane. All right, here we go. We go in the Miner. All we need is a hit. We get it. That's going to be Fireball range. So can we defend here without using a Fireball? That's really the name of the game. Even if we don't have to, or even if we don't, it's not a big deal, right? Because uh, we can just cycle to another fireball. We go with the mortar. 
Yeah, we have fireball in hand. Only five seconds left. It's gonna be a fireball to end this thing. Three, two, one, and fireball down. Another victory for Macarius. And a good game comes down. Good game indeed against Lava Hound, Lava Loon which perhaps is, is making a comeback, guys. I don't know. We are currently 12th in the world. All right, guys, 12th in the world against Boof Mac. Oh, man, have we got our work cut out for us here. If we want top 10, 7,500 trophies on ladder, it's going to be a tough one against Boof Mac. Boof Mac, one of the best players in the world, certainly. Been on the channel multiple times, an English pro. Let's see what he has in store. So he goes with the, the Night Witch and the Baby a Dragon. I see Night Witch and Baby Dragon. I think Golem or Elixir Golem, right? You don't see that combo really in any other deck other than one of the two Golems. You see Skeletons, and I think it's Elixir Golem. So we'll see what he has. Elixir Golem is still nasty. Ah, Magic Archer, too. I haven't seen this version. So Fireball comes down against Magic Archer immediately. Pretty much rule of thumb, if your opponent has Magic Archer and you have Fireball, you always use your Fireball against the Magic Archer, right? It's one of those cards that you just don't want to deal with. Even if you're not getting tower damage, you just want to do that 4 for 4 trade, get rid of the Magic Archer, get him off the board. So here we go, it's going to be a Mortar down against this Night Witch here for Boof Mac. A Baby Dragon also at the bridge. Baby Dragon is tough for this deck because it kills half of our cards, right? Uh, nice King Tower activation by Boof Mac, and he uses the Skeletons to kind of mitigate the damage there. Forces a Fireball out of Macarius on the defensive end, but the damage-wise is not going to be too far off. I guess I take that back, about a 1,000 damage differential or so between the two towers. So we have the lead here with about 20 seconds or so in change left here in regulation. Again, a lot of spectators, almost 80 spectators in total. Now we have 80 here in this match. Boof Mac uh, goes with the Magic Archer in the left. We go with the Spear Goblins in the right. Here comes that defensive mortar. Let's see what he does here, how he plays this. We have Rascals in hand. Uh, okay, we play Rascals opposite lane. One is immediately disposed of thanks to that Magic Archer. And again, like I was saying with the Magic Archer, look at how much value that Magic Archer is getting for Boof Mac, we fireball the Elixir Golem instead of the Magic Archer. Magic Archer takes down the tower. What was I saying about Magic Archer? How incredibly powerful he is. Another one is down here for Boof Mac. Again, against this deck too, he's he's well poised to do serious damage. Macarius is going to have his work cut out for him here. We have a big opposite lane potential push immediately taken care of by that last card, the Fireball from Boof Mac. So 30 seconds left. I think, unfortunately, Boof Mac is going to play spoiler in today's video, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, Fireball Miner comes down. May I take that back? 20 seconds remaining. We can cycle to another Log Fireball here. But two Elixir Golems, that's going to be GG. No way to stop this. No way. Elixir Golem is still incredibly strong, and Boof Mac proves it an amazing player, an amazing deck. That is going to do it. I'm sure Macarius won't want to play any more. Uh, less T tilt here on ladder, around 7,500 trophies. So let's go ahead and see where he is to end this video. And then I will actually, before we go, I'll actually play a very quick mortar bait match myself, and uh, we'll see how I do. No promises. So let's see. He is currently 19th in the world. Uh, be right back when I play. All right, guys, here we go. We'll see how we do here. Have the deck selected. Going into the arena here against Chai. Good luck. We'll give him the Inferno Tower. We don't have Mortar in our starting hand here, so let's just chill for a sec from the Platinum Prime Clan. We'll go with the, uh, he goes with the Bandit, so we're just gonna go with the Spear Gobs for a moment, and then uh, we'll go with the gang here as well gonna set up with a bats and he goes with the zap there so we're gonna have to play rascals no connection oh man <laughs> how did that connect that was actually well played on his part i gave him nice poison value as well he's gonna go in with the aggressive bandit there we're just gonna respond with the spear goblins let's see i'm gonna go with the mortar here see what he does He whiz down. Let's see what he's gonna go with here. He's gonna zap this up, but I want to get another hit, so I'm gonna go with the log, and then at least the tower will finish off that dark prince, right? Man, it is raining so loud right now. I'm sure you guys can't hear it, but I can. Wow. 
Uh, let's see. This is what happens when you play Mortar. <laughs> Alright, so I don't think he has... Famous Last Words, I don't think he has a... NATO. Gonna get to the tower a little bit there, I'll take that. Does have Poison. Gonna go with a Mortar, defensively here. Spirit Goblin's doing work, I don't think I need to support this at all. Nice. Nice, nice. Got a couple Spear Goblins here in the right. Let's see what he does. He's gonna let it go. I'll take that chip. I'm gonna split bats over here in the in the back. I'm gonna go again with the pressure here opposite. And we already know what he's gonna do, right? He's gonna He's gonna come at me with the poison. So very important that we always wait for the poison to be done. Don't need... Okay. This is easy. Okay. Not easy. Okay. Bats are down. Does get some damage there, though. Way more than I thought he was going to get. Uh, let's see. He has Ewiz in hand. He has Poison in hand. Boom. And he goes for the trade, I think. Log. Bats. Spear Goblins. No! Oh, man, he got me. Well played, man. Well played. That was... I felt like I sucked, man. <laughs> Mortar's definitely not my forte. Here, let me do one more before we end the video. Can't end in a loss, but geez, that was... That was tough. Samster, level 12... Normally I would cut this out, but I have somewhere to be in a little bit. So we're going to go against the level 12 and see what happens here. Start with Spear Goblins in the, the right. He has Ice Whiz, so I'm assuming he has NATO. Going the Log as well. Going to Goblin Gang that. And we'll Rascals. Also going to need bats here to prevent- Ah! Oh! <laughs> He's using the new arrows! <laughs> and we have a Valkyrie on our tower! Alright, so he splits his damage, that's the good news. The bad news is, that didn't go so hot. Okay, Boy Rascal gets a little bit of damage, and we get a little bit on the- in the uh, right as well. So he has Valkyrie and, uh, interesting, okay. I don't have a great response to this. I'm just going to go with a High Mortar at the last second. Which is late. Nice job there, Ash. Let's see if we can finish off this Mega Minion. Not much else we can do here, but we will get the uh, Tombstone out of hand. And... Alright, so I'm trying to think of what little spells this dude has. Uh... Don't know. I'm gonna have to fireball here. Waste his arrows. We take care of that Valkyrie. That was a little bit better that time. So arrows. I forgot he had the arrows. <laughs> Alright, so if I mortar here, he doesn't have Valkyrie as Tombstone. So I'm gonna mortar now. Well I have the three elixir for the goblin gang. Drop it now. I swear. Going with the log here, getting a little bit of a little bit of damage there. A couple of spear goblins stay alive for him. I'm gonna go with a high. He might arrows this. I'm gonna go with a high motor opposite lane in just a sec. He does arrow. Okay, nice, nice. Just what we wanted. Not really, but he'll get death damage, but no hit. And we do get the. Connection with our mortar. That's good. Gonna send the bats in. He's gonna goblin gang, I think. Yes. Nice log. Get a couple da a couple hits there. Okay. We've got he's got that. Okay. This is no big deal. No big deal. This time we'll pull it. Bats are down. We are going to minor fireball here for the game. Minor fireball GG. Log, boom, boom, boom. Whew! Samster, well played, man, well played.
I gotta tell you, deck is fun, a little bit of tricky, a little tricky, gotta get used to it, gotta get used to it for sure. I'm gonna repeat everything, I'm gonna repeat everything, I guess, this video. <laughs> uh, big shout out again to Macarius for joining me here on the channel. Check out Macarius' Twitter and Stats uh, Royale profile. You can check out his game log and keep track of him for the rest of the season. Uh, that will be in the show notes below along with. Uh, but guys, another reminder, creator code CWA if you want to support me inside the game. Uh, only if you're going to spend gems anyway. Don't spend money just on account of me, certainly, guys. And check out my second YouTube channel, uh, Ash Raid Shadow Legends, if you have any interest in Raid Shadow Legends. Huge shout out. Again, to Macarius and to my YouTube partner, Bren Chong. Check out his information as well. Thank you for watching, and as always, take care, guys.